Hi, welcome back to Typecast Heroes, where we believe typology can save the world. I'm Jesse Miller. And I'm Amanda Fogelson, and today we are going to continue our videos on the cognitive functions. This series serves as a teaser for our 16 podcast episode, 16 episode podcast series that's going to come out this summer. In case you're new to Typecast Heroes, in order for that series to come out, we need 100 of each of the 16 personality types to be with us. <laughs> If you need a reminder about that project, click the link below and it will take you over to our first video. Welcome to Typecast Heroes. In the last set of videos, we talked about the cognitive functions a little bit because we talked about the results of your Myers-Briggs test. So you know that you get a four-letter code based on four dichotomies, introverted, extroverted, intuition and sensing, thinking and feeling, judging and perceiving. So all through this current series, we've discussed a different breakdown of the types of cognitive functions that you can have based on that four-letter code. Now remember, it's very important that you get the right type so you can have the right language to describe what's going on in your brain to yourself, to your people that love you, and to the systemic implications. So it's very important that we use the right language because there is power in language. Now remember, Carl Jung was very abstract and very vague in his definitions, and lots of people on the internet, myself included, spend lots of time arguing about the exact definitions. So it is important to remember that they are very abstract and that they can present in very different ways and people have multiple interpretations of how these cognitive functions work in our mind. But I stick as close to Carl Jung's work as I can and I work off of a lot of the theories that have come after. So if you have an issue or a question about any of the things that we discuss in these videos, please feel free to reach out to me or to us in general and we can answer and clarify those questions. So this video is all about SE and I, which is extroverted sensing and introverted intuition. They are on an axis, which is why we talk about them together instead of separate. And just a quick warning, like we do in each video, anybody can be anything. So, so much of what we say today is probably going to be able to relate to you, but remember what your default setting is and who you are at your core so that you can know if you're just relating to something that we say versus if you are actually an SE user, mm -hmm. there is a difference. So um, some types, actually the main types that rely on SE and NI are ESTP, ESFP, ISFP, and ISTP. So in our last video, we did cover how introverted intuition and extroverted sensing work together on an axis. So this time we are gonna be talking about the opposite of that. We're gonna be talking about extroverted sensing with introverted intuition. So again, Carl Jung was very vague about these definitions. But this is the easiest way to explain it, at least in all of our discussions mm -hmm. Amanda and I have had. This is the way that we present it to you is the easiest way to understand it. So if you want to get a more in-depth explanation, we did go more in-depth in the intuition versus sensing video that you can mm -hmm. watch if you haven't seen it already. So if you, if you still have questions, then it's time to come talk to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So extroverted sensing is a perceiving function and it is the lens through which people who use it see the world and this is how they see the world all the time. Extroverted sensing is all about the concrete data, all of the detail, they're very detail oriented, hyper focused on everything happening right now in this moment in time. So if you watch that S versus N video, you saw our box metaphor where a SE user will talk to you about all of the details of the box. They will see everything about the box and they'll be hyper-focused on everything that that box offers. Sometimes extroverted sensing has been misconstrued as not seeing big enough or missing something. So the way that I often see this argument is sensing offers baseline, intuition offers something extra. And that is not the case at all and I will argue vehemently forever about that. Extroverted sensing gives you something that intuitives can't see. Because mm -hmm. intuitives can't see all of the detail. They can't see anything beyond their own agenda, yep. right? So they'll look at a room and an introverted intuitive would see one object and connect it to their internal world abstract thought. Extroverted intuitive doesn't see these the things in the room. They see what could be based on the objects in the room. Mm -hmm. But an extroverted sensor, they're going to go in the room and they will see what's actually there. So they are living very firmly rooted in reality, which is a huge gift. Huge. So extroverted sensing, they can also have, they see all of these details. And because it is very in the moment, they also tend to get kind of bored with the same experiences over and over mm -hmm. again. Because extroverted sensing is a very consume, extroverted, perceiving function. So it wants 
new things. It wants kind of explore new places. It wants new adventure, th- adventure, mm-hmm. a lot like extroverted intuition. Mm-hmm. The difference is, is an extroverted sensor would go into a room and again, they're experiencing their, all of their mm-hmm. senses are fully engaged An extroverted intuitive. No, it's <laughs> almost like an extroverted intuitive can find the newness and adventure without actually having to like be there leave right whereas an se almost needs to like travel be or there. something to to experience that right so it is um they're very they're two very different functions but they do present in a similar fashion so just like with extroverted intuition though extroverted sensing comes with a lot of the same negative stereotypes that they're flighty that they can't focus that they can't plan forward that they can't do anything beyond live for the moment that they tend to be those yolo mm-hmm. crab <laughs> crowd which again sometimes they can be Mm -hmm. but extroverted sensing is on an axis with introverted intuition so introverted intuition is very thoughtful it it assigns meaning to things it looks for abstract connections so if you have those two things on an axis it means that you are very you can be rooted to a deeper meaning and purpose you don't have to just live for the moment and be spontaneous hippie love child right well you can be you can be but you have the option to strengthen that NI and be able to use it in a way that's going to ground you just a little bit more. Right. So point is that these are extroverted sensing is not just one behavior. Yeah. It's not just 100 percent of the time living as a flighty, like freelance, mm-hmm. whatever. It is rooted to that introverted intuition. So we're going to cover the extroverts first. So there are ESFPs and ESTPs, and they are two of my favorite types because they are They tend to be so much fun. And my dad is an ESTP and he's the most ESTP, ESTP I've ever met. (laughs) Like he's the epitome. Like if you had to, I don't really believe in type stereotypes, but if you had to draw one up, my father is a stereotypical ESTP and they're just, I love them. They're fun. And then for ESFPs, um, one of my coworkers for years was, or she is, an ESFP. And she is absolutely amazing as well. So I got to know both of these personality types really intimately before I started studying them. And I absolutely love them. I think they're amazing people. How their extroverted sensing works is because they are leading with this function. And remember, just like those who lead with extroverted intuition, they want to go out and explore. They want to do new things. And they get these kind of stereotypes that they want to have fun that they're adrenaline junkies. That, that they, is the number one stereotype. Adrenaline is junkie. Like fun, fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, party, party. However, because they do have judging functions next, so for an ESTP, they have introverted thinking, and for an ESFP, they have introverted feeling, that can kind of ground them and hone them in as well. So basically what this does is when they look at the world, they see all the concrete data, they see all of the information, and then they are able to use that to develop their introverted thinking and their introverted feeling, which makes them very opinionated people, but people who very much know who they are. Mm -hmm. There's no question to an ESTP or an ESFP who they are at the end of the day because they know. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing. That is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's something, it's it's quite the complete opposite of what we were just talking about with on our last video about NI, where there's kind of almost a loss of identity there. Um, that's, nearly the opposite with Mm -hmm. the SE. They know it's what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. And it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So for an ESTP, it means that they use their introverted thinking to form very logical and firm opinions because they see all of the data, but they actually see it. Like they're using their extroverted sensing to see it as it is. They're not doing the introverted intuitive thing where they are pulling apart pieces mm-hmm. and trying to make connections that may or not be that may or may not be there. Mm-hmm. They're making they're actually seeing it as it is, which is astounding to me. I love watching it. It's fascinating. So then they put it together with their TI to make these very logical and firm opinions. And then ESFP does the same thing for their own moral values and ethical code, which is why I think ESFPs tend to be like the most amazing and like fun, loving, and good hearted people because they see things as they are mm-hmm. and they're not trying to look for alter, alter, al- ulterior motives. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. They're not trying to look for ulterior motives. Mm-hmm. They're just trying to, to see things as they are and see mm-hmm. people as they are. And they are, it is, they tend to be very accepting and understanding. And mm-hmm. that's something beautiful in and of itself. Kind of one of those types that can meet you where you're at. Yes, Mm -hmm. they're so good. They tend to be. 
I'm trying to catch myself because I have I a know. bias. I have a really bad bias. Um, I love all types, but I do have, like, there are certain types that have specific spots in my heart, and yeah, the EPs have that for me. Not all EPs. There's not a single one. The ESPs. Yeah. ESPs. The ESPs have... <laughs> Just kidding. ENFPs and ENTPs, you're cool too. Some of the struggles that I hear from the ESTPs and the ESFPs is that they have a lot of trouble focusing because if you think about it, if you're not one, if you love one and you're trying to understand them better, if you're in a room and you see all of the detail of everything and something like a fly comes in or um, something is off kilter or off balance. Squirrel. It's going to, yes, but that's their whole life. <laughs> mm-hmm. So for, for me, who's an introverted intuitive, like I can hyper focus on something and then like a bomb can go off and I don't get distracted. For an extroverted sensor, somebody who leaves with that, it's very hard for them to get into that zone. They can, but it's very difficult for them to get there. So it can be really overwhelming and distracting if they have to do something where they have to be very, um, very focused for a long period of time. Mm-hmm. A desk job is can be very challenging mm-hmm. for them. It doesn't have to be but it can be very challenging. And to move into a little bit, like the podcast series that we're going to be talking about this summer is, a, is one of the main focuses is formal education. Mm-hmm. And so one thing that we want to point out, this is just like a little bit more of a teaser, um, is just how types are in formal education, maybe how we could hopefully eventually change the system to where it fits more than just the average student, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. And in the sense, you can see now if you were to take these types and put them in a room with other people around them and they're supposed to sit quietly and take a test and not talk and not look around and not do anything, but yet they are focused on every detail in the room, how hard that could be on top of throwing the immaturity on top of it with just age and being a child and, you know, whatever else that comes with, but just kind of throwing that out there since we're talking about this I feel like this is the easiest way to get you guys to understand why that is a focus of ours right now Mm -hmm. another thing that they have trouble with is because they are so attached to reality and to this reality it can make the future seem kind of not real Mm -hmm. so that's why they have trouble planning for the future because this moment is so hyper detailed for them. This is all there is right right now because this is what they see. And mm-hmm. so they know that the future is out, but I've talked to some um, some ESPs who said that they can't even plan beyond three weeks out because it doesn't seem real to them, which to me, I have a hard time connecting to the moment at all, mm-hmm. ever. So it is a very unique challenge. However, I argue that it is a huge challenge gift as well to see things as they are because you're not sitting there just like making stuff up of what's Mm -hmm. happening you're like so many people do and again you might not be an SE user and you might still make stuff up I don't know you but that could happen but just in this situation you're able to really see things as they are and you're not going to be going off on some tangent of like what if what if what if what if what if in a healthy state Mm -hmm. For the majority of your life, you will not be doing that. But there are some other states. Mm -hmm. But so what do I say to society, to dealing with ESPs? Um, Let them be the spontaneous, honest, tell it like it is. See it for what it is, folks. Like let them be that and don't make them feel bad about it because it's not a burden. It Mm -hmm. is a huge gift that they have. So they're also super fast responders because of extroverted sensing. For instance, like a bank robber comes in and they try to like attack the bank or something like that. An extroverted sensor is going to see what's happening and they're going to spring to action. Whereas Mm -hmm. the introverted intuitive over here is going to be thinking about the moral implications of that situation. And by the time I act and do anything, everybody's... You'll be dead. I'm dead. (laughs) I'm on the ground. But an extroverted sensor will not have that problem because they act, they tend to act faster. They Mm -hmm. live in reality, which is so cool and so amazing and so... It is a true gift, and if you are an extroverted sensor, you should own that hard. Like, Mm -hmm. own it. So, my advice for you SE users for some personal growth here, specifically you extroverted types, um, really hone in on your NI. 
that is what it it again it comes with a balance it makes you a balanced human being and it's there for a reason so your ni is going to be able to help you focus for one which is huge again that's one of the number one things that we mm-hmm. hear during all this um it's also going to help kind of tame your se a little bit not that your se isn't a positive thing it absolutely is but it can be a lot and mm-hmm. that can be very overwhelming and so if you can home hone in on your ni and really try to build that up and strengthen that part of you it's again just going to strengthen you as a human being all over full balance so now we're going to talk about the introverts really quickly and so these introverts as we can see these functions we've got the istps and the ISFPs. And they use SE, extroverted sensing, very differently from the extroverts because it's their second perceiving function and they lead with an introverted judging function first. So they are also, if you look at their cognitive stack, they're the bridge type. So their extroverted sensing and their introverted intuition work together very closely. So because it's in the center of their stack. Mm -hmm. So they are more, They have a tendency to test as intuitives because of this. So an ISFP and an ISTP very often, and I'm talking like constantly, Mm -hmm. test as INFJs or INTJs. Chances are, if you are one of those, you may have watched our NISE video um, because you may have tested as an An INFJ. And if that's the case, that's what we're really wanting to show you is the difference here and what a gift SI is. Because we SE. know SE, sorry. So because we know that so many times getting that INFJ, getting that rare type and being an intuitive and all that is looked at differently and maybe a more positive light. Positive light. It's not it's you guys have just like SE, like I I'm in an E user and SE is basically my opposite, but they are so similar in so many different ways. Um, and I love SE. But there are there are so many positives that SE has that any will never have. Like things that I will never be able to fully grasp and things that are just out of my reach, something I can't strengthen about myself. And it's just something I have to accept and manage and cope with more than strengthen. And um, there there are so many positives about SE that I kind of wish I had sometimes that you guys can do that I will never be able to do. And so again, so SE is your second function means that you have an intuitive child, uh, you have an intuitive third function. So they work together very closely, but I'm going to explain the difference for you. So. For ISTPs and ISFPs, because extroverted sensing is not their lead function, they lead with their judging function, so it works a little different. In a similar fashion to actually the INFPs and the INTPs, ISFPs and ISTPs can be kind of daydreamy to an extent, but it's going to be a lot less because they are based in reality in this moment. They are able to see things. They walk into a room and they can see the details of the room, just like an extroverted um, or just like an ESFP or ESTP can. Mm -hmm. The big difference between them is that they lead with their judging functions first. So for an ISFP, they lead with their feelings first. So when they walk into a room, they are automatically checking it for against their own morals and values and ethical beliefs. And then they use extroverted sensing to perceive everything around them to see if it falls in line with that. And then they can even, we can get further, they use their introverted intuition to assign meaning to it all. So if you do all of that and it's happening very quickly, it can seem very much like you are an intuitive person. And you are, you have intuition, but you don't lead with that function. You are actually leading with extroverted sensing. It's almost like you're still getting there, but you're going through different means Mm -hmm. to get there. So you relate to it, you relate to so much what we're saying, you relate to that gut feeling, you relate to all that stuff, but the way that you are accessing it is very different than how a true NI user would. Mm -hmm. And personally, I love talking to ISTPs and ISFPs because they can take the same theory that I'm working on, but because they are extroverted sensing, they see the theory for what it is and they are able to break it down for me and to tell me to stop looking because mm-hmm. the answer is in front of my face and I can't see it. I can't see the forest through the trees, mm-hmm. so to speak. 
and an ISFP and an ISTP can. They are very good at focusing on the concrete realities of theories, on the practical applications as well. That's something else that's super yes. important to yeah. point out with ISFPs and ISTPs is that practicality is something that they can do because they actually see the reality for what it is. Like That's not something that an INFJ or no. an INTJ is good at. We're no. bad at it. Yeah, We are bad at being practical. And if you are fighting me, congratulations, ISFP. <laughs> <laughs> We're not great at it. We are not. We mm -hmm. can learn traits just like anybody can. But mm -hmm. so, and these people have so much gifts to give by being an extroverted sensor. It is absolutely amazing. So similar problems that we hear, they can have a sensory overload because, again, mm -hmm. just like the ESFP and the ESTP, they walk into a room, they see all the details, and then they get stressed out by things being off. But it's almost magnified in an ISFP and an ISTP because they are also introverted. So it's coming at them from the external world. And that's really aggressive. And it's different from an INFP or an INTP because their extroverted intuition kind of works with them. Mm -hmm. Whereas what I've heard from ISTPs and ISFPs is sometimes it feels like the outside world is almost like assaulting them. It's like really aggressive with their concrete details and they have a tendency to get very overloaded with the sensory. Well, in one sense, you don't have control over what is actually happening right in front of you. Like the concrete details, you're not the person that walked into the room and set up every single little thing where it was. Like you didn't have control over that. You're just having to deal with it and you notice it all. Whereas an INFP or an INTP, um, they do have control in a certain sense because it's what's going on in their mind. Mm -hmm. So there's a big difference there on how that's going to feel when it's coming at you. Right. And so, and something else that the ISTPs and the INFPs can do, or I'm sorry, ISTPs, I, ISFPs can do is they're really good at bringing forth the re real world into a different form. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the ISTPs are very good at seeing data for what it is and then transforming it into a different type of system. So they're not making it more efficient necessarily, but they can project it forward because they can use their introverted intu intuitive third function to take this data and they don't have to look at all of the details. They don't have to plan it out 10 years in advance, but they can plan it out two years in advance. Mm -hmm. And then the ISFPs can do the same thing with, and a lot of times ISFPs are associated with art and associated with writing. Yep. And they don't very have creative. To, yes, mm -hmm. very creative things. And again, they don't have to be. Extroverted sensing actually has a high penchant for math because math is just it is what it, it is. is. What it is. And they're the, it's the best subject out there. They're the people who look at the math problems and are like, and look at you who don't understand it. An introverted intuitive over here who's like, I don't get that math problem. It doesn't make sense. And they're just like, What do you mean you don't get it? It just it's makes literally sense. Literally black and it's white. Right there, right. <laughs> that is the gift that extroverted mm -hmm. sensing gives you. So again, if you're bad at math, that doesn't mean you're not an extroverted sensor. That's just yeah. an example that the concrete realities of things are. That is a real thing. Like yeah. you need that. Everybody needs that. Can you imagine if we just had a world of people who were just living in their head and just making shit up all the time? Like, well, yes, I can because I'm introverted intuitive and that is but my reality. Could you mad imagine a world of that? Like, no, yes. you have to have. I would hate it. Right. You have. I wouldn't eat. I would be dead in three days. Exactly. You have to have sensing people out there. You have to have sensors. Like. You guys bring so much to the table, and I said this in the last video, whichever one it was, that we need you to function. Like, we, like, it, the world needs you. And we need you to know that you are yes. an extroverted sensor and to accept your type and to own your type. Lean into it and right. become the best that you can. Become the best you. That's what we always say. And But to do that, you have to know that this is your type mm -hmm. and stop grasping to be that special one when you already are so special world advice to society so for the isfps and the istps who've owned their stuff the again the difficulty i hear is sensory overload i hear that they get um that often they are told similar things to the esfps and estps and that they're too blunt and that they're too honest and i say just let them do their thing because they see things that you can't they see the world for as it is 
So if you are dealing with a problem, I think the best person to take it to sometimes is an extroverted sensor because they are able to show you things that you can't see. Because show you what's literally right in front of your face sometimes. It's absolutely amazing, I think. And they make very good scientists. And so world, let them do it. Let them be the scientists. Let them be the mathematicians. Let them be the people who, and the artists. Mm -hmm. Let them show you what the world really is instead of all of these extra things that don't have to be there. Just let them show you the beauty in the world that currently is. You got personal? In some advice for personal growth, for one, own it. <laughs> own it. That's probably my number one thing um, because there's just so many. There's so many more than any other mistype. There are so many ISTPs and ISFPs that just won't let go of the INFJ type. Or INTP. Or, yes. Or INTJ. Or any of the ends. Like, it's just, and, and again, it's so easy to test as an end because tests aren't always accurate. And you feel very intuitive. Yes. Beca and because you see things in a different way. And again, you might come to the same conclusion or whatever, but it's just a different path that you're taking. So first of all, just own it because it changes everything. It in terms of your cognitive stack and your functions and how to grow as a person and how you understand society and how you understand your mind. These, that S versus N matters so much. You have to get that right. So own it. That is my number one advice. Um, actually, that might be my only advice. Yeah, you guys are just good. You're you guys, good. yeah. You're good at adulting. Yes. You're good at existing. You are good at typically. So I mean, not always. There are unhealthy versions of each type, but you're just you're good at what you're good is at happening. Being people, yes. And like in and, in and your, we may not be. We may be repeating a lot of the same things, and we're probably not giving you like solid practical, which is exactly what you want. You're right. like looking at me, like shaking me, like you're I want to be better. Really annoyed at us right now, and I get it. And I'm so sorry. We understand why, but we're just in admiration of you. Yes, you guys have everything that we don't, <laughs> and so it's just something that that you guys bring so much to the table that, um, and and not to say that that we don't. We have our own gifts as well. But, and so do all the other types. Exactly. But, but we need think, everyone. I think some of the most undervalued, to to, yes. to clarify Miss Extroverted Intuition's point, yep. I think the most undervalued point uh, undervalued groups are the extroverted sensors, so the ISFPs and the ISTPs. Mm -hmm. I do not think you guys get your due in society enough, yep. and it absolutely kills me because you guys are good people, and I love both types very much. They are so good. You have so much to bring to the table. You just got to own it and show up. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching <laughs> Typecast Heroes. If you're interested in participating in the project we mentioned several times, please go ahead and go to our Facebook page or Instagram page and we'll be in contact with you. So remember, hopefully you learn something about yourself or about the people that you love. Um, remember, it's important to have this language so that you can talk about yourself, the things that are going on in your brain, so that you can talk about yourself to the people that love you, and so you can discuss the systemic implications. Because being human is hard. And this makes it just a little bit easier. And if you guys have any questions, or if you need some clarification, or if you need help typing between the two, or between mm -hmm. the four, or whatever you're trying to fight right now, um, just come talk to us. We're happy to help guide you. For hours and hours and hours, because there's literally nothing else I would rather be doing. <laughs> that is not even a joke or sarcasm because it's really not. That's my life. I love it. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, follow, all the things. And we'll see you on the next Typecast Heroes. Bye. Let's gather around the type fire and sing our type fire song. Our M-B-T-I-T-Y-P-O-L-O-G-Y song. And if you feel uncomfortable, then know there's nothing wrong.